Okay, this is just a short video on uh, reading and over output, uh, particularly focused on pairwise comparisons. Um, that people have had some problems with according to emails. So uh, just within a two-way and over where there's a two-way significant interaction, just how to read those. Uh, so to do that, I've grabbed uh, data set five, which we've used in the chutes, and that's a two by three mixed factorial design. Uh, this is one where we had practice, which had none versus some, okay, repeated measures, and reader group, uh, dyslexia, ADHD, and control was our independent group's IV. Uh, dependent variable is percentage of errors made, and uh, so high scores indicate poor performance. Okay, so let's have a look at the output. So this is uh, just the um, normal and over output that I produced earlier. So you can see there, there's repeated measures, none versus some, there's between groups, three groups. Uh, and here's our descriptive statistics. And if we go down here, both the multivariate box and the within subjects box tell us that the practice by group interaction is significant. So P0.017 there. So that says, right, do the simple effects. So I used the syntax, typed in the compare commands, and I have produced the simple effects. So if we scroll down, there's main effect of group membership. Uh, there's main effect of practice. And here we have group membership by practice interaction. OK, so three boxes there. Uh, first box gives you the descriptive statistics, which will come in handy. Second box is pairwise comparison. And the third box, there we go, bump me around, why don't you, is uh, just the box showing the univariate tests. So that's the F statistic for the two ANOVAs testing each of the simple effects. I've got two of them because I've got two levels of practice and I asked it to compare groups at each level of uh, practice. And so for practice level one, which was no practice, there's a significant effect of group, as shown there in the univariate box. And uh, for practice level two, which is some practice, uh, there is also a significant effect of group. So I have permission to have a look at the differences amongst the groups at both levels of practice, none and some. And the pairwise comparison box right above it there is where I do the actual comparisons amongst the groups. It says pairwise comparisons because it just pairs them up and does each pair of comparisons that it can find to do. Okay, so you'll notice there that it says uh, practice. And if you look below practice, it's got level one and level two. So none and some. And then beside that, the next column is group membership, but it's level I of group membership. And if you look below that, wherever you see the name of a group, it is establishing that in this particular instance, that's level I. And then the third column across uh, is the J level of group membership. Okay, so the first line of results you can see that we're within level one of practice. Under I group membership, it's got dyslexia. Under J group membership, uh, the first line, it's control. This, is, this table is always comparing level I with level J. So level I is dyslexia, level J is control. Is there a significant difference between dyslexia and control? The answer is yes, there is a significant difference between dyslexia and control. So that p-value there. Now, to report that p-value, we are going to have a look at, uh, we're going to calculate a t-statistic. Now, what I'm going to do, I actually do it within this SPSS output so you can see what's going on. Under edit, uh, no, it's not edit, it's insert. I'm going to insert new text. See, I've got a space down here. And I'm going to tell it that I want a decent sized font so that you can read it. Give myself a bit of space in there. 
So the first line of output there is dyslexia versus control. So dyslexia versus control. Okay. And let's go ahead and make that really obvious. That's level I versus control, if I could type properly, level J of group membership. Okay. So I'm going to calculate a T statistic for that. Now, my degrees of freedom comes from the univariate tests underneath. And it's the error degrees of freedom. So I've got 85. Okay, so in brackets, 85 equals, now I'm going to need to calculate the mean difference, 5.337, as you can see there on that top line, divided by 0 0.907, which is the standard error. Okay, and that equals, grab a calculator. 5.337 divided by 0 0.907 equals 5.88. Okay, I've rounded that to two decimal places. Okay, so that's the first one. The next line down, I've still got under level I, I haven't changed. There's no new name of the group, so I'm still at dyslexia is level I versus, now this time, level J is no longer control. Now it says ADHD for J. So ADHD is my new level J. Okay. Going to do another t-test for that. Again, 85 degrees freedom. And this time my mean difference is 0.951, and that's going to be divided by a standard error of 1.095. And so we'll go back to the calculator, clear everything there, and we've got 0.951 divided by 0.10, oh, no, 1.095. That would have been bad. Okay, equals 0 0.87. Okay, now I've got my p values showing there. So uh, the first one, I could have said p less than 0 0.001, and this one, the p value equals uh, 0.388. Okay, now because I've got three groups, I need three comparisons. And so the next one, the only one, two groups that I haven't compared yet are uh, control and ADHD. I've compared both control and ADHD to dyslexia, but I haven't compared them to each other. So this time I'm going to do control. I look for where it becomes level I, and that's just the next level down. Uh, but I have to skip the first line and go to the second line because I don't want... Dyslexia is my level J. I want ADHD as my level J. Okay. Now, if you're writing these up, of course, you don't mention your level I and your level J. I'm just putting them to make it more obvious for you guys. Uh, my T in this case, I've got, well, it says minus 4.385. Don't care about the minus. I'm going to say it wouldn't matter in the least if you used it or didn't. What I'm interested in is, are they significantly different to each other? I'll use the means to work out which direction it goes in. I'm not going to rely on a plus or a minus t-score to tell me the direction of the difference. That's a recipe for disaster. It just depends which one you put in first as to which way they go. Okay, so we go off the calculator again. 4.385 divided by 1.106 equals 3.96. And my P is once again less than 0 0.001. 
Now, the other thing I would want to include if I was going to report those is an effect size. Now, you'll notice there you can just see it in the univariate box down the bottom. Uh, I have partially to squared, but that is for the overall effective group. So I've got three groups. The differences amongst those three groups account accounts for 30.5% of the variance. But I'd kind of like to have an effect size for just this difference between dyslexia and control. Uh, whenever you do a t-test, an independent group's t-test, uh, Cohen's D is a good option. Okay, And it's easy to get because all you got to do is grab your handy uh, search engine, otherwise known as Google, and I'm going to type in there, effect size, calculator. Hit enter. Okay, and gives me a bunch of them. But I like this one, this first one. There's a reason it comes up first on Google. It's popular. A um, couple of reasons to like it. Uh, the main one is because www.uccs.edu. This is published by some kind of academic at a university. Notice the next one down is soskistatistics.com. It might be good, it might not, I don't know. It's somebody who thinks they know what they're doing and they set up a website. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. At least Lee Becker works for a university and hopefully teaches stats and knows what they're doing. Now, I've used it before and I know Lee Becker does know what uh, he or she is doing. Uh, and you get this. And it is very easy to use. You've got two different ways of calculating your test statistic, your uh, Cohen's D from this, if I scroll down a bit. So first one, I can put in my mean of group one, standard deviation group one, mean of group two, standard deviation group two, and tell it to compute it. Or I can put in the T and the degrees of freedom down here. I get the same result either way. Okay, let's do it using our descriptive statistics. So uh, now, Challenge is here, if I go back to SPSS, I've got my means, but I've got standard errors. And uh, Dr. Becker wants standard deviations. So I'm going to go back to the top of my output, where I get standard deviations, and use these. Okay, now it requires that I remember who I'm comparing with whom. I'm in a no practice condition and I'm comparing my dyslexia group to my uh, control group. That's the first comparison. So I've got 10.0111. Probably don't need all those standard uh, decimal places, but I've gone there. 4.76288. I definitely don't need all those. But they're there. And 1.81228. Okay, so there's the mean of group one, which is my dyslexia group, and their standard deviation. And under group two, I've got the mean of the uh, control group and their standard deviation. I hit compute, and there is Cohen's D calculated, uh, assuming, well, it's pooled variance, um, and actually presumes that the samples are the same size. 36 versus 34 is not going to make any difference. Uh, my ADHD group, they're 18. Um, yeah, don't worry about it. Um, it's it, it's going to be near enough to write. Uh, so Cohen's D for this, 1.48. So if I go back down to where I was typing in my results in here, and I go to edit that, I'm going to say Cohen's D equals 1.48. So my dyslexia and control groups differ by very nearly one and a half standard deviations. Okay, that's Cohen's D, that's how you interpret it. And I would do the same for each of these other groups. Okay, so that is how you interpret the pairwise comparisons box. Okay.
Now, while we're talking about Cullen's D, let me make just a brief comment. Uh, we have down here the effect of practice, and it's the same thing, level I, level 1 versus level 2, I versus J. So I, now I don't actually need to calculate a T statistic for this because my F statistics are here. And I've only got two levels of the IV, so the F statistic just tells me there's a difference and here's what it is. Um, it's only when you have more than two levels that you need to calculate T statistics. Um, but I will mention that uh, I am fine to use my partial leader squared here to describe the effect size uh, for the effect of practice at each level of group. If I was doing T tests and if I was doing them on uh, repeated measures levels, uh, I would not calculate Cullen's D for that. Okay, there are problems with using uh, Cullen's D for uh, repeated measures. And if you're curious to know why, Dr. Becker's uh, handy website also includes lecture notes about effect sizes and how they're calculated. He also has some lecture notes about why you don't use Cohen's D for a paired t-test. Do not use paired t-test value when computing effect sizes. Don't do it. And those lecture notes explain why, if you're interested in it. Uh, otherwise, just take my word for it. Um, okay, so you, there's a problem with using Cohen's D like this for paired samples. You can use it, you just got to be really careful how you do it, but not like this. Okay, so that's how to handle uh, ANOVA output, um, looking at pairwise comparisons with a two-way ANOVA. Uh, hopefully that is of some use.